Say what's cracking YouTube? It's your boy 16 to life and I'm back like I'm on a pro violation. You're down. Now for those of y'all new to my page, in 1994 I got arrested. I was eventually sentenced to 16 years plus life and I ended up serving 24 years straight in the California prison system. During those times, I accumulated some good stories and some good insight on things related to prison, gang banging and stuff like that. And I'm going to share a little bit with y'all today. If you happen to like this, then definitely be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, and most importantly, hit that notification bell. That way, anytime I drop a story, you will be notified ASAP and you can hop on it whenever you're ready. Also, like I told y'all, man, I rap. Do not get it twisted. The flow is none like Curtis Blow, man. Be sure to check me out. I got a song called Never Gave Me Therapy. It's on all major streaming sites. I got a video for that on YouTube. I got several songs up. Matter of fact, just go to my YouTube playlist, stroll down to gas stations, and you can check all my stuff out right there, man. Now, let's hop into this story right here. Well, actually, this is not going to be a story. I'm going to just give y'all uh, a reply. Sometimes in my comments, I get people asking me, you know, I may be talking about a dude or, or a, um, um, a situation that I was in. And I'll say, hey, man, he was a good dude. And sometimes people will ask, well, man, that dude was a gang member and that dude was in prison. Man, how was that dude a good dude, you know? And so I want to break that down for you guys, in my opinion, you know, um, especially, okay, dudes. My generation, you know, I was born in the 70s. I hopped in the streets in the 80s. Dudes, uh, dudes from my generation, uh, a little after and especially before my generation, 60s, somewhere up in there, you know. Uh, many of us was raised in two parent homes, man. Many, many, many of us grew up with a lot of morals, a lot of values, a lot of integrity, you know. Uh, a lot of us grew up in communities where we had knew our friends who later on may have became our fellow gang members. A lot of us had had known those guys our entire lives. You know, I, I still have many friends who I'm friends with today who I've known literally since the first grade, uh, Head Start and stuff like that. Later on, some of them became my homeboys. You know, I spent the night at their house growing up. They had spent the night at my house. You know, I see them at high school. Um, I see them at school. Then I see them at church. I see him at the swimming pool, happen to see him in the, in, the, um, in the supermarket, stuff like that. So it was more than just a gang affiliation, you know. Um, you have several individuals who are in gangs before they even realize it. And what I, what I mean by that is, you know, when you've been having friends all your entire life and now you guys have, are, are of the age when people join gangs, you know, 14, 15, 16, you're out there, you're running around, you know, you're just doing stuff, you know. And so you really don't see these friends as your gang homies you know you still see them as your homies who you grew up with now you guys may just be you you guys may have the commonality now where you are um just hollering out a gang or representing the gang but this is still your lifelong this is still your lifelong friend and so for some individuals that's why um getting revenge seems or, or or getting revenge is easier you know because like i said man this is this is really not my this is really not my my uh, my homeboy per se as excuse me as gang terminology goes this is this is my friend man this is damn near my brother and so uh you know a lot of my friends like i said man i grew up in a small community and so when we're out there in the street and i may i may have seen one of my friends mother or father you know i'm Hello, uh, how you doing, Mr. and Mrs.? You know, you treat them with respect. If we're out on the corner doing something that we didn't have no business doing, we'd stop that. You know, we'd put the weed down, take our hats off, put the drink down or whatever because we wanted to be respectable. We didn't want it to get back to their parents that we was doing this stuff, and we didn't want it to get back to our parents. And so, um, and it's a trip, right, because once I got to prison and I started to talk to some of my other friends or whatever who I'd met in prison, you know, when they were from bigger cities, they basically grew up the same way, you know. And so uh, nowadays you have dudes who who aren't from certain communities and they'll want to come and join these gangs because gang banging is so it's so uh, it's so commercial, you know. It's so commercialized. It's so popular. It's a fad now. You know, you have you have social media. You have all these different games. You know, some some get some guys may want to come and join the game because that gang has um, a popular rapper. You know, 
from that gang. You have gangs that originated in California that's out in Alaska, out in Oklahoma, you know, uh, Alabama, all over the place. And so um, it's definitely more of a fad now than it was back when I was growing up. And so, you know, but like I said, a lot of us, we was raised with integrity. We had morals, you know, like I say, a lot of these individuals who we happen to be in gangs with, they are our friends. So if we're out on a, we, if we're out on a corner. You see one of your friends, he may drop a thousand dollars worth of drugs. You've been knowing this dude all your entire life. You pick it up, you give it to him, man. And so a lot of these individuals who I met in prison, they still had these same, uh, same values, same uh, characteristics and same morals. And so that's what I meant. In some of my stories, when I say, hey, man, this dude was a good dude, you know, and then for an individual who's never gang bang, um, <clears throat> this is especially for you. And, and this is what I want to break down. You guys have to realize that uh, joining the gang is voluntary. I have me personally. I have never met anyone who said they was forced to join the gang. So joining the gang is voluntary. And so um, a lot of us who join gangs, we are able to differentiate between the gang world and the non-gang world especially like i said when i grew up man there was rules to it man um you know um we didn't prey on women we didn't prey on children we didn't prey on people who wasn't involved in the gang activity you know not to say that not to say that all thought like that but many of us did you know there's always exceptions to the rule and so a lot of people fail to realize also especially who've never been involved in this type of gang world that not only is it is it okay when you're a, a gang member to hurt um, other gang members who you have a beef with or who are your rivals not only is it okay it's it's something that's required it's something that you're supposed to do you know what I'm saying so that's why for those who've never lived that lifestyle where they may say man that dude's in that dude's in jail for shooting three you know that dude is in jail for shooting three people how's he a good person well like I said those you know those were rules and we all entered into this this agreement uh, and when I say we all I'm talking about all the gang members even though um it's a deadly game it's a game that we're all we all were playing you know and so um that's why dudes are upset sometimes gang members when they have other gang members come and tell on them you know because we all we all you know we all made a uh an unwritten agreement you know to abide by these gang rules you know you have individuals out there who shooting at people and then when they get shot they come to they come to court and tell and that's why it's frowned upon because you know uh like i said the unwritten agreement that we all entered in when we joined our respective gangs which leads me to the next uh, topic that I want to talk about is that of course there's different levels of dedication which is why you have individuals telling which is why you have individuals snitching which is why you have individuals who um, do things that's considered cowardly you know and frowned upon by other gang members or sometimes even their own gang members because everybody's uh, level of dedication is different you know and that's something that I came to realize later on you know when I was young naive you know I thought that everybody's level of dedication was uh equal to mine you know which is very untrue but we also have to keep in mind man that many of us join gangs 14 15 16 years 16 years old some of us younger than that so um, now it's not logical to expect an individual who made a decision as a child to always, um, always, um, basically do what, what is expected as a gang member, but it's not, you know, it's just, it's just not, it's not logical thinking. Everyone is not going to, you know, you can't, you can't think in absolutes. Everyone's not going to be the same. And that's what a lot of us fail to realize that man, a lot of us join gangs as children, you know. We were children, man. We were young, um, and and really, that's just the um, that's just the bottom line. Even though you know, at that age, we knew right from wrong. But once again, like I said, being a gang member, it was okay and it was permitted, you know, to try to hurt and take out whoever you was beefing with as a gang member because that that's what gang that's what gang banging is all about, you know. Um, a lot of people who've never gang banged, you know. When they hear the word gang banger, gang member, in their mind, they're thinking the lowest scum of the earth, you know, that the media portrays, you know, that heartless individual who will, you know, who will, who will, um, 
who will prey on anybody. And like I said before, when I, you know, when I grew up, man, um, anybody who wasn't a gang member was off limits. You know, we didn't prey on old women, old men, children. And sometimes if we happen to see a person who was a who was a um a gang member, somebody that we was beefing with, but he happened to be with his mom or maybe his sister, someone who 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 wasn't who wasn't a voluntary participant in the gang life, we would give him what we call the pass, you know, which meant we wouldn't trip on them. We wouldn't transgress on them. You know, basically like, okay, I'll see you. Uh, I'm going to catch up with you next time, you know. Um, but things definitely have changed uh, nowadays, you know. Um, but when I was locked up, I ran across a lot of individuals who I consider real good dudes, man. And like I said, they just chose to, like I did, they chose to hop into gang life for whatever reason, you know. I met a lot of individuals who um, I would have no problem you know, come into my house, let them come to my house and, and, and spend in the night or whatever, because um, when you're doing time with, with people, you know, you talk to them. Um, but more than that, their actions speak louder than their their uh, their words, you know. And sometimes, you know, you walk, watch people, you see you see the things they do. You see um, you see how they move, man. And I've definitely ran across some good hearted individuals in prison who was in prison for, you know, from. Um, for many gang shootings and stuff, because like I say, that that's a part that's a part of the game. That's something that's allowed. That's something that's permitted. You know, that's something that's applauded. You know, even though as crazy or asinine as it may be in the gang life, that's what comes with it. You know, when you are when you are really uh, dedicated, you know, to to the, to to your gang. But uh, not to say that every single gang member that I ran across was dedicated or. Um, what I allow to come to my house, you know, there's some dudes in there who, who, um, who, you know, who had a different code of ethics, you know, they didn't care who they preyed upon, you know, you had some dudes in there who, um, you know, they, they was going to get it however it came. And, you know, so there's always exceptions to the rule. And I'm not saying that every single gang member would be considered a good dude, because at the end of the day, that's what being a gang member is, you know, a gang member basically is saying, Hey man, I'm tougher than you. I'm bigger than you, I'm badder than you, and I will put these hands on you if you get out of line. And with that ideology and that type of thinking, that's why you have several gangs now that are beefing and going at each other's throats that was allies 5, 10, 15 years ago. Because eventually, um, you know, the gang is going to eat itself within, man. You know, when if you put 20 gang members in the tank and they're all from the same hood or they're allies, eventually you're going to have fights. You're going to have a uh, dissension because there's nobody to beef with. You know, um, as a gang member, you don't want to cower to nobody. You don't want to bow down to a certain extent. You don't want to feel a person is, um, you know, pushing a line on you, applying pressure, telling you what to do. And like I say, by nature, a gang member is aggressive. He's violent. And so um, he's always going to try to push his will on the next individual. If if. If you are a gang member and you have that same type of mentality and that thinking and someone tries to force their will on you, eventually you guys are going to bump heads. And so um, that's just the nature of being a gang member, you know. But uh, that's just my little opinion on why I will say that there are good dudes, you know, uh, in gang banging. I've met, like I say, I've met many I've met many good people who I, or many people who I consider good people, man, and they just happen to be gang members, you know. I believe that if you ran across me or several individuals um, that I've ran across and consider good dudes, just talking to them alone, you wouldn't be able to tell they was a gang member, you know. Um, but anyway, that's my, uh, that's my little comment on that right there for those who question or, or who ask, you know. Uh, anyway, y'all stay tuned, man. I got some good videos coming up. I got a video coming up about the biggest crip I ever ran across, the biggest crip I ever saw, man. I got another video coming up called The Making of a Gang Member. And so, um, I got some good stories too. I'm finally give y'all that knife story, man. Uh, so anyway, y'all stay tuned in. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy 16 to life. Resume normal program.